Well, we're excited about uh, what we've been studying in uh, Revelation. We want to continue looking uh, into uh, the prologue. We finished the first verses, which is what we looked at uh, over the first six uh, lessons. And I know six lessons probably seems like a lot to look at one verse, but uh, now that you've been exposed to uh, the, the depth of truth in that verse, uh, probably six lessons is inadequate because you're probably confused. <laughs> Welcome to my world. So, um, but I really want to enter into this next verse with you, verse 2, and uh, I want to talk to you about the content uh, to what uh, concerning what John is testifying to. Okay, uh, the end of the first verse, that sentence is in the in the uh, New King James is he sent and signified it by his messenger to John. Okay, so this message, the unveiling of Jesus Christ through this messenger, was given to John. John testifies to it, and then he 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 gives content to what he means by it. He testifies to it. Uh, that is, the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let me read this verse. Uh, the end of verse 1 and verse 2. He, he sent and signified it by his messenger to his servant John, who testifies to everything that he saw. That is, the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, John is testifying to two things. First of all, John's testifying to it. Hey, he's testifying. I want to talk to you about what that means. But specifically, what's he, what he's testifying to is the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you about that. Um, what John testifies to is probably what we want to look at first. And I want to look at Word of God, testimony of Jesus Christ. I want to look at the Word of God. Um, the Word of God throughout Scripture is, is used in several different ways. It's used... Um, Probably we could talk about it primarily. It's used in three ways. Okay, uh, The Word of God is used in three ways or expressed in three ways. First of all, the Word of God is given, firstly, in a direct manner. Okay, uh, A direct communication. The Word of God. The Word of God is used to describe a direct communication of God to man. An example of that would be Moses. God's Word. God speaking. Um... Another example of that would be the uh, disciples on the Mount of Transfiguration. God spoke, man. Words that belong to God. God spoke. It's a direct communication. Spe speaking directly from God to man. Audible stuff. You can hear that. There's examples of that both in the Old and the New Testament. First way. Another way to look at the Word of God was as it is, was presented to the people of Israel, and this was much more common, as it was presented to the people of Israel through the prophets. Um, see, the idea was is that when you were hearing a prophet, you were hearing the words of God. You were not hearing the words as they were uh, understood to be coming from the prophet. Hey, they weren't the prophet's words. The words that you were hearing were from God. Now that's tied up and understood in what a prophet was. You knew that a prophet was a declarer de of the word of God because of the word prophet. You called the guy, hey, his name was Ezekiel. Yeah, you knew him. Uh, Amos came up from Tekoa uh, in Judea. Uh, I think he came from Judea, but he came down in and, and prophesied to God's people. And he was a he was a farmer, man. They knew him, Amos, but he was a prophet. Why? Because of his communication of the word of God. Second manner, word of God comes through the prophets. To, now, to to investigate what a prophet is, just briefly, a prophet is made up of two words: pro and fetes. Prophet, pro and fetes. Fetes means to tell. Okay, it's to tell. Proclaim. Pro, we've looked at this before in, in prologue. An aspect of the word pro is uh, before. Okay? So that would be to tell before. To tell before. Fetes, to tell before. But another aspect of pro, which is really more significant, is not before. It can also be translated for. Okay? For. has a for aspect to it. So pro has a, has a before and a for. And that's pro fetes, to tell. So to tell, the telling of the prophet, there was a before aspect and a for aspect to it. The before aspect of the, of the telling of a prophet was pretty easy to understand. Prophets talked about things before they took place. That's the before aspect. They would tell things that would happen before they would happen. The fetes. Another aspect of prophet 
The other aspect of the prophet was not that they were talking about things just before they happened. It was this for aspect. And the idea was is that the prophet spoke for God. Uh, the prophet would go to God, get the words of God word for word, and then come and tell those to the people. So that when the people heard the prophet, they were not hearing the prophet, they were hearing God. I mean, they were hearing the prophet, but hey, those were the words of God, the mediator, the prophet. So there, that's the second aspect you can, you, uh, to understand the word of God as it's used in Scripture, was that it came through the prophets. The first aspect was a direct communication from God to man. God came down and spoke to Moses. He said, hey, I heard the word of God. They'd say, how'd you know? He spoke to me. Yeah, I was up on the mountain. He told me and I wrote it down. Word of God, first aspect, or first understanding of it in Scripture. Second understanding of it in Scripture was that it came through the prophets. Okay, The Word of God came through the prophets. When you, came in, when you come into the Scriptures, you read about the prophets, you're not reading what prophet, what he's, when you read Ezekiel, you're not reading what Ezekiel had to say, you're reading what God had to say. The third aspect that the, uh, that the uh, Word of God refers to in terms of the Word of God, the Scripture refers to in terms of the Word of God, is that the Scripture itself is the Word of God. See, the, this Scripture is what we believe is inspired. Um, that's sent down from tradition, that they recognize this as authoritative, they recognize this as inspired, meaning that man did not invent this, man didn't come up with this, that when you get into the Word of God, just like the prophets, you are not reading the opinions of Jeremiah or Ezekiel or Paul for that matter. You are reading the opinions of God. Now we're going to cover this in a couple more sessions later on, but just to give you a little uh, help with it now, the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, really helps us with this. There's, in Hebrews chapter 1, and for that matter, chapter 2, 3, and 4, every time there's a quotation where God is speaking, they, they attach that to Scripture. And let me explain that. For instance, chapter 1, verse 5, he's talking about how angels are superior to man. Uh, or, I'm sorry, how Jesus is superior to angels. He's talking about how Jesus is superior to all things. He begins with angels. He goes to man. But he says in verse 5, For to which of the angels did God ever say, and then he quotes, You are my son, today I've become your father. Quotes that. He quoted that from uh, Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. He quoted that. But it's interesting that we quoted Psalm chapter 2, verse 7, which is in our Bible. He says, God said that. Verse 5, for to which of the angels did God ever say? So his perspective was, and this is the early church, that when you got into Scripture, you were not dealing with what man wrote, because David wrote that down. Hey, David may wrote it, but it wasn't authored by David, it was authored by God. When you get into Scripture, you're not dealing with man's opinion, you're dealing with God's opinion. And he goes on and does that throughout the first couple chapters. We'll look at this in a couple, let in a couple lessons, the significance of prophecy. But the three aspects of the Word of God, as we can understand it from Scripture, is one, directly, two, through the prophets, three, the Scriptures themselves are understood to be the Word of God. So when, when John says, hey, I testify to the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, what he's, when, he, when he says the Word of God, he's talking about one of those three aspects. Now, these three avenues of the Word of God are linked together, really, with one concept. Okay? And the concept is, is that when you got into, when you got into the Word of God, the Word of God was revealing Jesus Himself. The Word of God, God has one thing to say, God is always talking about one thing, and it's Jesus. Now, the, ex the plainest example of that is, John refers to this as a prophecy. John refers to the scripture, uh, the book of Revelation, as a prophecy. I mean, that's what this is. But, what is that prophecy? How does he describe that prophecy? The unveiling of Jesus. And this prophecy, the book of Revelation, is just a small portion of the overall inspired writings that we call scripture. Let me say that again. The book of Revelation is a prophecy. But prophecy is just a small portion of the overall inspired writings that we call scripture. And John refers to the book of Revelation as a prophecy, and the content of that prophecy is the unveiling of Jesus. So all Word of God, all the Word of God, all what God wants to talk about is Jesus. See, when God was speaking directly to Moses about the law, who's the fulfillment of the law? Jesus. See, when God spoke through the prophets to the people of Israel, 
describing of what God's going to do and giving instruction. Who fulfilled all that? Jesus did. Hey, all Scripture points to Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of this. Let me give you one example of that. In John chapter 5, Jesus looks at the leadership of Israel. He says this in verse 39. You diligently study the Scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the Scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. So what do the Scriptures testify? Jesus. Here's what I'm telling you. The Word of God is described in three ways in the Bible. Uh, the Word of God, the first way is described, a direct communication from God to man. Second way, the Word of God came through the prophets. Third way, the Scriptures themselves, as referred to, is the Word of God. But however it comes, the Word of God is always talking about one thing, Him. In fact, Jesus is the Word. He is the speaking of God. John chapter 1 verse 1, the Word became flesh and dwelled among us, man. Actually, it's John 1.14. Hey, the Word dwelled among us and encamped among us. Jesus is the speaking of God, the Word of God. First aspect. Jesus is everything that God wants to say to us. So when John says, hey, I testify. He sent and signified his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything that he saw. And when he's testifying to everything that he saw, the first thing he says is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. The word of God is, hey, that he testifies to that. All that's said in Scripture, all that God has talked about is him. Hey, he, he, that's what God's talking about. Now, he adds to that, it isn't just the Word of God. He says he also testifies to the testimony of Jesus Christ. This word testimony of Jesus Christ, or that phrase testimony of Jesus Christ, is really significant. Um, the word testimony there, uh, referring to the testimony of Jesus Christ, it's a different word than John's testimony. See, John is testifying to everything that he saw. The Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's John's testimony. But John, that word for testimony that John is using, uh, is different than the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's a different word. The word testimony of Jesus Christ, first of all, is a noun. Okay? It's a noun. And literally, it, 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 it's, it's not an action. Okay? It's a noun. Person, place, or thing. It's like the testimony of Jesus Christ. It is, it is a thing in and of itself. It's not an action. Jesus, it's not like Jesus testified. It's not described in terms of an action. It's a noun. And what that means is, is Jesus, his testimony, he is the fulfillment. He testifies to in and of himself of all of God's word. All that God has ever spoken, all that God has ever talked about, Jesus is the fulfillment. He himself is the testimony of that. Um, all word of God, all the things that God has talked about, that is filled up in Jesus. He is the testimony of that. You want to know what that looks like? Jesus. Jesus is the testimony. Okay? So it's the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what John is testifying to. Now what's really significant is, is when you look at John's testimony, when it says he testifies to everything that he saw, that word testify is a verb describing an action. I want to read this to you. This is a direct quote of what that word means. The word testify that he uses here, John testifies to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. It literally means to bear witness. Bear witness. And this is what it means. A human declaration of ascertainable facts, okay, based on first-hand knowledge or experience. In other words, Based on John's, oh, get a hold of this. Based on John's first-hand knowledge and experience, okay, they, facts, man, he testifies to that. What he does is, is he looks at the Word of God, everything God has ever said that he was going to bring a past, you know, uh, intimacy with him and everything God had always talked about the promised land for the people of Israel think about this all the prophecies of the Old Testament about how I'm going to bring you into your and rest and, and I'm going to have a people for myself all that God said to Abraham hey I'm going to have generations and, and I'm going to create a people for myself to live in intimacy with me word of God stuff all that God had said, that is a testimony. Jesus is the testimony of that. All of that's fulfilled in Him. He was the first of that. 
All that God had ever said he was going to do was fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the testimony of that. Now, John says, hey, I testify to that. I testify to that. In other words, all that John has seen, and it, actually that's how he says it, who testifies to everything that he saw. See, John had lived with Jesus for three years in ministry. Then Jesus was crucified. And then John spent, before this book was written, some 50 years, 40, 50 years after the death of Jesus, living this. And he stands right here. As he's writing the book of Revelation, John says, I testify to that man. I, 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 based on ascertainable facts, man. First-hand experience. Everything that Jesus said. Hey, I, the Word of God is fulfilled in Jesus. Everything that's said, I testify that. I've experienced that in my life, John says. Everything that he said, man. Everything I saw in Jesus, I'm telling you, man, I've seen that. Because the message of the book of Revelation is, everything that's going on in Jesus is going to go on in you. That's, that's the message. That's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus comes to these seven churches. Ah, well, I hope you're with me on this. Jesus comes to the seven churches. These seven churches. He reveals himself as the answer to what's going on in their life. He reveals them, himself as, hey, everything you see in me, you're to embrace. Everything going on in me is supposed to go on inside of you. Okay? Jesus is the fulfillment. He's the fulfillment of who you and I are to be. We've been called to that. John has lived this way for, for 50 years. And he says, hey, I testify to everything that I've seen, man, my entire life, everything I've seen in this prophecy. Hey, when I was on the Isle of Patmos, all the message of who Jesus is, who I've been, I testify to that, man. I'm telling you, based on ascertainable facts, personal first-hand experience, I bear witness. I testify that it's true. I testified everything that I saw. Everything, in other words, he says, everything that I see going on in Jesus, man, I've experienced. He said it would happen and it happened in my life. He said I would overcome sin. I've overcome sin. He said, man, I'll be with you always, man. I, he's been with me always. He, he, is, he is literally, John is, is, the, is, is the servant who is testifying to everything that he saw. I wonder. I wonder what would happen if that could happen in our lives. That everything that I read here, I could, I could allow him, man, to do what he wanted to do in me so that I could have that kind of testimony. I could stand up and say, hey, I testify. I testify to this. It's true, man. Why? It's happening in my life. John says, I testify to everything that I've seen, man. Everything I've seen in my life. What's that? Word of God and him. John said, I've seen him firsthand, man. Everything he said has come to pass in my life. Everything he said would transpire in me. I'd live in ways I couldn't live. I'd, I'd overcome in things I wouldn't be able to overcome. I shouldn't be able to overcome. And there are things coming through my life, man, that were not... A Everything he said that would happen, it happened. I testified to it. I want to encourage you. Go and be that kind of testimony in your world.